Hi everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Red Panda, a new storage engine for modern hardware. My my name is Alex, and I am the CEO and founder of Vectorize.io. I've been in streaming for about 12 years. Uh, prior to Vectorize and the product that we're working on, uh, Red Panda, I was a principal engineer at Akamai. Uh, and through an acquisition of Concord.io, which was a stream processing engine on top of, of Apache Mesos, you can think of it like Spark streaming, but rewritten in C++. What is uh, Red Panda and and this uh, th this real time engine that that I'm going to talk about today? Uh, today, Red Panda is really a drop in replacement for Apache Kafka, and the 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 tenets of the product are operational simplicity, zero data loss, and 10x faster with uh, being Kafka API compatible. And so. Fundamentally, uh, the executive summary, and this is the only product pitch of this of the slide, is that we remove Zookeeper, we remove the JVM, we sort of as part of the the, the Scylla Summit, we are built on top of C Star, um, and so we're going to talk at length about sort of what are the architectural primitives that enable such a su such a rewrite. But let's start with a fundamental question: Why write a new storage streaming engine? Right, like why? Why sort of? Why not extend an existing storage engine and maybe add, you know, JNI hooks so that you could hook it up to either Pulsar or or, or Kafka or you know, there's other ten thousand streaming projects out there. Pulsar and Kafka being sort of the main ones out there. Like why not just extend it that way? And sort of the it's easier to explain, uh, you know, the reason with uh, sort of the results. Um, and without sort of boring you with, with the long, long history of the company and kind of how we got here, this is sort of the impact of why we would want to rewrite a new storage engine. And so, you know, at the, at the low end here, you can see anywhere from, you know, 5x, 4 to 5x uh, performance improvement. And, you know, when sort of a, a, a JVM pause kicked in for this particular open messaging benchmark, um, the tail latency that, that this particular workload observed was something, you know, close to a second, whereas, uh, you know, Red Panda sort of stayed in, in, in 80 milliseconds. It's actually so low that it just blends in with the, with the X axis. So this was the intuition. And, but why kind of where, where, you know, where, where the gains, uh, come from and, you know, how is this all related to, uh, to, to the, the Scylla summit and, and the Sistar summit? To give you a little bit of context of what has happened in the last, you know, 10 to 12 years in the streaming space, I want to break this down into two parts. First, there's the software evolution and kind of like the contributions um, in this open source projects to, to the world. And then I'm also going to overlay that with the hardware evolutions. Uh, and so there were basically three fundamental uh, uh, changes that occurred over the last decade. The first one, and, and maybe the most significant for a new storage engine, is the fact that disks are a thousand times faster today. NVMe and NVMe SSD devices a thousand times faster than a spinning disk was ten years ago. Right, so not a thousand percent, but a thousand times faster. Huge magnitudes. Um, at the same time, they're actually ten x cheaper than they were. A decade ago, actually around the same price that a spinning media was about a decade ago. So when the first SSDs came out, which you know weren't even NVMe SSDs, the cost per terabyte was around two thousand five hundred dollars per terabyte. Today, you can buy a one terabyte NVMe SSD for about two hundred dollars on Amazon. And the the next two improvements that were foundational to why we decided to rewrite a new storage engine for modern hardware is that the the speed per core sort of stayed you know it, there were improvements over the last 10 years something around like 3x but the material improvements came from the increased core count the fact that you can go to amazon and rent an i3 e and metal with 96 uh vcpus um and 100 gig uh, gigabit per second NICs, right? So huge departure from the type of hardware that, uh, you know, sort of the, the, the alternative frameworks were built on top of.
Let's describe a little bit about the problem and then how does CSTAR help us achieve you know, a, a solution that, that yields that, that 44X performance improvement that you guys saw on the first slide. At its core, um, a message queue is, is really sort of this uh, replicated or distributed order, reliable, immutable chain of events. So let me break this down. First of all, um, uh, events are just this, this facts that happen in your, in, in your architecture. You, you serve an ad, you charge, you know, uh, let's say 10 cents to click on an ad, or you sold an item of clothing, or you order a ride with, with Uber or Lyft. Like, those are sort of like known facts. Reliable, it means that we can sort of survive uh, some, some particular kinds of failures. And the protocol that we chose for uh, data safety is Raft. And so what Raft gives us from uh, as application developers, it gives you a sound primitive. And what it tells you is a math proof. And it says, you can survive F failures given two F plus one nodes. Two examples there. Let's say that you had three computers and one of them crashes, things function as normal. Now, let's say that two out of three computers crash, the, the writes and the, the reads become uh, unavailable. You, you can't make progress because you've lost the majority of nodes. And the same thing happens when you have five, seven, nine, et cetera, nodes. Um, order is a really fundamental building block for uh, event-driven architectures. And the idea is that once you produce a series of events, let's say ABC, it will always be ABC. In fact, it'll be replicated the same ABC events in all of the other computers in the exact same order. And, and what, uh, what's more, there'll never be a gap in the log. All of these primitives come from a replication uh, uh, protocol, which is, uh, which is Raft. And so it, it, it sort of, it gives you a very clear uh, mental picture of how to build an architecture, event-driven architectures. Sistar uh, and it, it, Red Panda is built on top of Sistar. And what Sistar gives us is this thread per core architecture. And what is nice about this particular thread per core architecture is that everything be becomes explicit. Asynchronicity becomes a first class citizen. In fact, the alternative of doing things uh, synchronously uh, becomes more complicated than embracing asynchronicity as a first class citizen. And so in this particular uh, imaginary computer that I have on the left, you can see that you, you sort of divide memory into on a, on a per core. So you boot up the machine, it splits up the memory per core. And now you get this, this really nice uh, core locality. And so the mental model as a programmer is you're always operating either in, implicitly in a particular core local context or explicitly you're making a jump to a remote core. And so that works really well with modern hardware. The intuition behind Sista and you know, the, the reason for us trying to leverage these modern hardware advances um, is really to treat everything like an asynchronous uh, network call. A particular example to drive this point home is assume for mental simplicity that you have a single core operating at three gigahertz per second, right? So that means three billion instructions per second. To write a single 4,096 bytes to disk to, let's say, this uh, NVMe SSD Western digital device that you see on the right, it'll take anywhere from 20 to 140 microseconds that I've measured. Which means if you use a synchronous programming model, you've wasted anywhere from 60 to 420 million clock cycles, just gone. And this kind of latency and just sort of bubbles up when you're using synchronous calls. The alternative that Sistar gives us is sort of this, this, this primitive building blocks. And so what it says is the following that has been sort of foundational for, for Red Panda. The first one is that Sistar as an architectural component is a cooperative scheduling uh, uh, primitive. Uh, it means that every time you, you take a future, you also yield a future. And this becomes sort of this viral primitive. If you have ever programmed in Akka or Orleans or Pony language, etc., cetera, um, anything that touches a future or any future context or any actor, it eventually becomes a future. And the reason for it is that 
once you map your mental model, you can now group them, cancel them, complete them, generate them, fulfill them. It's a very flexible programming model. And on top of that, it gives you a huge performance improvement, like you saw in the first graph, where in an end-to-end -end system, you can see a 44x state latency performance improvement over the state of the art. And what this is, is a, it's, it's about fundamentally about programming structure, where parallelism is a very variable. So once you build an application on top of CSTAR, uh, you know, the, the, the programmer, when you're writing the code in, in you know, so of course in C++, um, you think about how do I structure my code uh, with this with this future, these primitives, and you basically have just two primitives. You either yield the future or you explicitly yield context to a remote core. That is your unit of, of concurrency. But the execution, the parallel simultaneous execution of your code is actually a variable that the operator, the person running your program can specify. So for Red Panda, we're embedded in security appliances where someone runs us with a single core and two gigs of, of, of RAM, or someone runs us on 96 vCPUs and almost a terabyte of RAM on the new i3 VM metals. Thank you, everyone. Uh, please reach out to me on Twitter at emacserno uh, or send me an email. Also, the project is source available on GitHub. Uh, you go to github.com vectorize.io slash redpanda, and you can find the entire source for this talk over there. Thank you.